Hey, this is OXDF looking at another challenge from the Hack the Boo CTF. Um, this is a crypto challenge called Spooky RSA. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at what we got. Um, there's a chal.py and an out.txt. So we'll start with out.txt. And it gives us an N, E1 and C1, and an E2 and C2. And uh, they're all big integers. So we'll, we'll, in fact, we can go ahead and start. Um, let's see, vim salt.py. They start taking some notes. So real quick, um, ben, env, python3, and now let's start making some notes. So we know n, c1, e1, c2, e2, like that. Okay. Okay, let's zoom in here. And we can now look, let's look at the child.py. And so what is it doing here? We'll start in the main. It's going to create an n and a priv, which is probably private key, in this key gen function. So it's going to get two random numbers, p and q, uh, two random primes, um, roughly, let's see, 10, 24 bits each. It's going to calculate an n, so that's going to be 20, 48 bits long. Uh, and it's going to return to us the n and the p and the q, which are considered the private key, I guess. Um, so down, now it's going to call, uh, it's going to convert the m into be the flag just as an integer. Um, and then we're going to here we have um, call encrypt where we pass in m, n, and then priv0, which is going to be p. So up here we have, we pick two more random integers, um, and then we say we're going to take p to the power e1 uh, mod n plus m equals c1, and p, to, and then p, and it says f, but it's still p, um, to, the power, to the e2 there. And we're going to return both of those. Um, and then that is what comes back to us here. OK, so let's start to, again, let's go back to what we know here. So what else do we know? Um, we know that uh, n is equal to p times q. We know that c1 is equal to p to the e1 mod n plus m mod that. Uh, we know C2 is going to look very similar. It's going to be P to the E2 mod N plus M mod N. Um, and I think that, that that's actually all we need to solve this challenge. And so the trick is going to be to recognize that what if we look at C1 minus C2? So we'll do C1 minus C2 is equal to, we can write that as P to the E1 minus P to the E2. Uh, all that mod n plus m minus m, and we're still all mod n like this. Uh, and so this will cancel out the m's, and we're just going to be left with uh, p1 to the p1 p to the e1 minus p to the e2 mod n. We can basically just leave it as that. Um, so we get rid of these parentheses. Um, so the trick here is to realize it's, well, it's very hard for us to factor a large prime like n into p and q. Um, it is not hard to find common divisors, so GCD, um, greatest common divisor of two numbers. So if two numbers have a common divisor, we can probably find it. And what we're going to note here is we know e1 and e2 are both greater than zero, which means we can factor a p out of this, which means that c1 minus c2 is divisible by p and n is divisible by p. So what we can do is if we can find the greatest common divisor of n and c1 minus c2, it's almost certainly going to be p. n only has two divisors, p and q. And if c1 minus c2 were divisible by q and p, then it would have to be, n would be a factor of it. So that would be weird. But um, so practically speaking, that means the p is going to be the greatest common divisor. So if we can find the, that GCD, we can then, once we, once we know P, we can calculate the rest of this pretty easily. So let's go ahead and try that. The, the biggest challenge um, is going to be, well, the biggest challenge from here is going to be reading in all the stuff. But first we'll do um, from, let's see, we can do crypto.util.number import uh, GCD, I believe it is. Hopefully that'll work. We'll, we'll double check. And then with that, we can say with open out.text for reading as f. 
We'll say lines equals read lines. Um, in fact, I always like I'm gonna do um, map strip uh, str dot strip uh, and read lines like that. So that way um, we'll make this a list. That way all the new lines get stripped off. Um, so now we're gonna have these lines. And might we have to do some um, playing to get this right. Um, N is going to be, let's come up here, we can can't close this, we can vim out. N is the first line. So we can do lines sub zero dot we'll split on the um we'll split on the like this. We'll get the first one, and then we just need to make this an int, and we've got n. That's good. Okay, the next line we're going to need to take, we want to get C, E1 and C1. So we'll say, um, do this. Let's, let's run python solve.py minus i. What this is going to do, it's going to drop us into a term. It's going to run our script up to this point, so like we can get n. Oh, maybe we didn't solve, or we didn't save. Let's try this again. Uh, Um, it helps if I do f dot read lines there, so catching errors. Okay, so now we, we run our script, but then we instead of exiting, we drop to a terminal so we can get n because we defined it. Um, we can get lines sub one and see what we're dealing with. Uh, we're going to want to split that for sure on like this. Um, and we only need we don't, we don't need this e one c one stuff, so we'll just do like this, and we've got we're good there. Um, now what I really want to do is strip. Let's see. Um, this whole thing is one long line, so let's do a dot strip. Um, we'll get rid of the, the we'll get rid of those um, open and closing parentheses. And now we're going to split this on comma space. Uh, I need the closing thing. Perfect. So now we have two things. And now what we really want to do is we want to apply an int to the int function to each of those. So that's good for a map. So we can say map int onto that. And that's going to return a map object, but we can make that a list if we want. And we can see we've got two integers. So I think if we, we can do like uh, a comma b equals, and we don't need them. I think we don't need the um, list anymore to do that. We can do a, we can do b. Sweet. So we've got this, this right here will be our, we'll use that. Why did I not? Okay, here we go. We can say on E1, I forgot, is it E1, then C1, I believe? Let me paste it. Oh, undo. That's again. E1, comma, C1 equals. Let's grab this right here. Paste that. There we go. Um, YYPP to pay. Oh, just one P was all I needed paste this in, and now we just want to simply replace E2 and C2. It's going to be the exact same, except for with this lines here. And so now, control D to exit out, run this again. Now we have E1, we have E2. They're looking good. All right, so now we've read in the stuff. Uh, now the math. Uh, we'll say, uh, we'll say uh, P equals GCD of N comma C1 minus C2. Uh, now we can say m is equal to c1 minus power of p comma e1 comma n mod n. Now we can also check um, alt m equals c2 minus minus pow p comma e2 comma n mod n, and we can do like an assert. Uh, m equals alt m. That. Let's try that and see if it works. It seems happy. Alt m m. We've got so so. The fact is, once we've got p, we can use either of these to calculate out. So now we seem to do a whoa. Uh, insert print. Um, I'll do bytes from hex. Dot decode. That and then we just need to put the hex in here. So the hex is going to be an f, f string with m comma. That. And if we run this, let's get confident and do it without the dash i. 
we get a flag. So, um, yeah, going to call it here. Um, thanks for sticking around with me till the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you next time. Oh, 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 o